Hope you're having a great day and I hope you had a great weekend. Um, and I hope you have a great week coming up. I wanna talk about stomach acid. Besides fat loss being the most Google word, the second, uh, the second most common query that we get is about acidity. Most people unfortunately and sadly think that they have more stomach acid and they constantly treat themselves with antacids all the time and they never get better. Of course, you take the antacid, you get immediate relief after a while, you have the same old pro problem over and over again. And I can't tell you the amount of people who self-prescribe themselves antacids and pop it like candy. And over time, they start to have many, many more conditions just uh, other than just gut issues or gastric issues. And we're gonna learn this in detail today because it's so important for you to introspect. Of course, there are also tests. You can go to your doctor and he will determine for you if you have low stomach acid. But we need to understand that the symptoms are almost similar. So all of us, the moment we get the slightest simple uh, symptom, like we have acid reflux or we have gas or we have bloating or we have a little constipation, we immediately link it that we have acidity. We have too much of stomach acid and then all of a sudden we start treating ourselves with all of the antacids which create the biggest problems. You need an antacid, of course take it. Uh, sometime a year ago, I was in hospital for an infection and I'd had to take medication that would cause acidity and I took my antacid for a week. The moment I got off, I was absolutely fine. I stopped the antacid. But today, there are people who wanna eat heavy meals and late night meals and before that meal, they take an antacid because they know they're gonna get acidic. You have no idea the danger you are putting your system through and the innumerable problems that exist in our world that you now may be able to relate to after we go through this list. So number one, stomach acid isn't a bad thing. When we eat our food, we have something called stomach secretions. The moment I start chewing my food and saliva starts going down, it acts as a messenger to start producing stomach secretions. Okay, one of them is hydrochloric acid. Then we have mucos. We have a lot of mucus being produced because the mucus has to line our stomach so that the acid does not eat into our mucosal linings. That's the beauty of the human body. And then we produce enzymes, digestive enzymes, and all of that stuff. Okay, so while the stomach produces acid, it also produces mucus to protect us from the stomach acid because if we don't have that mucus, then we have ulcers, we have peptic ulcers, we have a whole load of other inflammatory conditions that's caused. Now, what is the function of stomach acid and why do we need it? Because most people see stomach acid as the enemy. It's not the enemy. Too much or too little of stomach acid is the enemy. But every human being needs stomach acid. That's why we produce it. Okay, the body wouldn't produce it if it wasn't needed. So stomach acid helps you to break down your food. It helps you to break down protein and minerals into a form that can be absorbed by your body. The second thing, stomach acid, you have an acidic stomach so that you can kill parasites. You can kill bacteria and infections that get into our system through the food that we eat. And we are constantly ingesting bacteria and parasites from the food that we eat. But if we have strong stomach acid and the right quantity, it kills it, it destabilizes it. Now what happens if we have low stomach acid? We will start seeing an increase in stomach infections. A lot of people say monthly I keep getting bacterial infections. And then your doctor puts you on antibiotics and I mean, they're needed if you have a severe bacterial infection, but you understand the root cause of these constant stomach pains, the root cause of these constant infections is possibly because of your low stomach acid. And how many antibiotics are you gonna take? Which later creates bigger issues with your small intestine, and then you have more gastric issues and it never ends. It equals something called chronic illness, which the world is swimming in right now. So you started off with one pill and then you're in the second and third and the fourth and the fifth pill. So low stomach acid actually creates more problems than high stomach acid. Because now you have low stomach acid but you think it's acidity because it's giving you the same symptoms, reflux, burning, heartburn, so you take an antacid. How does an antacid work? It works by stopping the production of stomach acid. So you, in the first place you had low stomach acid and now you're taking an antacid which is making that low stomach acid even lower, leading to all the other problems that we're gonna talk about. So now you don't have stomach acid to break down your proteins and minerals, so your stomach works really hard. You have something called indigestion. The byproduct is gas. Gas is felt as heartburn for most of us. How many people have gone to the emergency 
okay, uh, emergency department in a hospital thinking you have a heart attack and then the doctor just tells you, hey, it's just gas, it's just heartburn. Again, so many people have gone through that, it's only gas because gas replicates heartburn, heartburn, we think we're getting a heart attack. In most cases, it is low stomach acid. So if your food doesn't get broken down properly the right way, you have indigestion, gas, heartburn, you pop an antacid because the symptoms are the same and you have a bigger problem. Now, let's talk about what happens when we have low stomach acid. You will not be able to digest meat. You will not be able to digest big meals. And if you're vegetarian, you'll find that simple foods like rajma, chana, legumes, lentils, or even you know vegetables that have a thick cellulose you know, uh, level, you won't be able to break it down. It makes you gassy, it makes you feel bloated up because you don't have the right amount of stomach acid. You have burps, you constantly burp a lot during your meal, after your meal, throughout the day. And sometimes when your burp really smells, let's say you ate a meal and you, you burp like three hours later and you can still get the smell of your meal. What does this mean? Your stomach acid was little, it couldn't break down the food, it's sitting there fermenting in your system. Now that fermented food will go into your small intestines and start a process called SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Fermentation feeds the wrong bacteria, yeasts that grows up, you get bloated, you have bad breath, you have constipation, or you have IBS-like symptoms, which is constant diarrhea, all because you had low stomach acid. So now you try to get your constipation and your IBS and your burping treated without looking at the root cause, which is low stomach acid, and you go through a whole prescription of different medications, a whole battery of different tests, where the root cause was your low stomach acid. Okay, you get gas and you bloat up after your meals. Right after your meals, you bloat up, two hours later, it goes down again, sign of low stomach acid. We spoke about SIBO and fermentation, bad breath, nausea. You would get nausea after you take your vitamins and your minerals because you need stomach acid to break down your vitamins and minerals. That's why your doctor will tell you to take certain multivitamins or certain vitamins and minerals or medication after a meal so that you've already generated stomach acid which will help you to break down the vitamins. But you take those certain vitamins on an empty stomach or with less stomach acid you get nausea, you get dizziness or you feel gassy and bloated and cramping in your stomach immediately. Food allergies and intolerance. Clinically proven today to have, a, uh, most of them to have a correlation with your low stomach acid. So you've been eating wheat all your life, you've been having lactose all, all your life and certain foods and all of a sudden you can't have it anymore. You, your food intolerance test tr throws up a whole load of foods that you grew up eating without any problems. That's because your guts change, you have a low stomach acid. Low stomach acid has allowed undigested food to leave, to, to reach a small intestine. Now you have a problem of a leaky gut syndrome where the same foods that you could eat before, you can't eat anymore. And that causes irritation in your gut, enters your blood system where it should never be. Your immune system wakes up and starts attacking these food molecules, also called molecular mimicry. Linking me to my, our next point, which is the link of low stomach acid and autoimmune conditions. From lupus to psoriasis to eczema to rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune conditions, leaky gut, low stomach acids, all interrelated. So now, when they tell you, hey, you have no treatment for arthritis, you gotta take your steroid. Hey, you have no treatment for lupus, take your steroid, I don't have a problem, but you have a lot to look at. Are you looking at your gut health in your recovery plan? Are you addressing the root cause? Are you just taking steroid after steroid and never getting better, getting more and more frustrated? Well, let me tell you, when we fix the gut of most of our autoimmune patients, they begin to heal. You can't reverse an autoimmune condition, but you, you can put it in remission. And sometimes you go to the level of looking at your stomach acid level because everything is linked with that. H. pylori, huge problem, huge, huge problem in our country. And H. pylori today, if you have it consistently, is also linked medically with colorectal cancers, stomach cancers, cancers of the gut. Because H. pylori eats into your system leading to ulcers, a whole load of other problems. How do we know we have an H. pylori? You can do a medical test or your body gives you indicators as well, which now triggers you to get a medical test. Constant burping, a heaviness in like your chest or just above your diaphragm when you're eating your meals, sudden loss of appetite, burping continuously throughout the day could mean H. pylori. You could have H. pylori if you've been popping antacids all through your life. If you're constantly taking high dosages of antacids, you've run out your stomach acid because guess what kills the H. pylori bacteria? Stomach acid. If you don't have the right amount of stomach acid, 
You can't kill the H. pylori bacteria. It grows into you and then it has to be killed with antibiotics. You have to take the antibiotic course. In some cases, you can break it down naturally, but if it's severe with severe symptoms, yes, you gotta take what your doctor gives you. So H. pylori, constant bloating. If you have low stomach acid, you have a deficiency of minerals and vitamins because you've not broken down your food. That's one point, you've not absorbed it. When you have low stomach acid, you don't absorb the nutrients. So now you have nutrient malabsorption and you are now nutrient deficient. We have so many other things. You'll have a protein deficiency, you'll have numbness and ting tingling in your fingertips, your toes, below the soles of your feet. I spoke about lupus, thyroid, eczema, gastritis, osteoporosis, pernicious anemia, iron deficiency, all caused by low stomach acid, skin problems, acne that never goes no matter what you do for your skin hair problems, falling hair, especially in women and in patients of alopecia because B vitamins are not absorbed into your system because they're not broken down. So what happens is you now have a deficiency of B vitamins which is required for your hair. And you tend to have hair fall, you change your shampoo, you oil your hair, you do all of that, but you don't look at low stomach acid because you are not absorbing the right amount of vitamins. You see undigested food in your stools, okay? Digestion is supposed to happen in the stomach. But the very fact that undigested pieces of food have reached your stools show that it's just passed through your system without the correct breakdown and absorption. Constant diarrhea, constant constipation, look at your low stomach acid levels. Infection and chronic sickness, we spoke about that. Bad breath, nausea, dry skin is another thing. So what can we do? What causes? What causes low stomach acid besides popping antacids all the time just because you want your lifestyle to be comfortable, you wanna eat late night, drink late night, smoke all the time, that also causes low stomach acid. The number one cause is chronic stress. The more stress you have, the more stomach acid gets depleted, which is why I constantly say, do not eat when you're stressed, calm down, put your phone away, do not do working lunches, calm down, don't argue when you're eating, don't fight when you're eating. Calm down, vitamin O, what is vitamin O? Sit down to eat, close your eyes, bless your food, take six deep breaths so you relax, you center yourself, you move from sympathetic nervous system to parasympathetic nervous system, which is rest and digest. If you are eating under stress, if you're eating with guilt, if you're eating with disgust, if you're eating with fear, low stomach acid. The number one cause of low stomach acid is constant chronic stress in the form of fear, anxiety, work stress, family stress, relationship stress, world stress, the stress that your own mind makes up because you're not mindful all the time. That's the first cause. Number two, overeating. It's common sense. Okay, you produce the right amount of acid for the right amount of food. If you're constantly filling up yourself, you're constantly snacking through the day, you have not even allow your previous meal to be digested completely and you're putting more food in your stomach, the requirement of more acid, depletion of more acid. Okay, overeating, not chewing your food. Remember we spoke about the messengers? When you chew your food, there's digestion that starts in your mouth and a signal that goes to your stomach to start producing digestive secretions like hydrochloric acid that is required for every single process as well as digestive enzymes. You don't have enzymes, you don't have acid, you have indigestion, bloating and everything we spoke about. So you need to start chewing your food. Stomach surgery, certain surgeries that you go through like a gastric bypass or certain surgeries can reduce your stomach acid and then there are ways to work around that. Certain medications, heavy chemotherapy, heavy uh, and, uh, sorry, heavy uh, radiation. Consumption of antacids can reduce your stomach acid, which is why it's so important for you to work with your diet and lifestyle when you are taking heavy treatments. Too much of sugar and junk will deplete, completely deplete your stomach acid levels, which is why when you overdo it on junk and sugar, you have indigestion, you have bloating, you have gas. That's the reason why you have it in the first place. And if you have low levels of zinc in your body and low B vitamins in your body, you cannot produce the right amount of stomach acid. For the right amount of stomach acid, you need zinc and you need the B complex of vitamins, showing you how important a balanced diet is. If you're doing a fat diet and you're deficient in B vitamins, you may lose a little bit of weight, but you have so many other problems, innumerable ailments that get caused. So chew your food, limit your processed and junk, eat fermented vegetables. If fermented food suits you, now if you already have really bad gut health, Sometimes fermented food will not suit you. It doesn't make fermented food bad. It just makes your gut really, really sensitive. 
And as your gut gets better, you can slowly move fermented foods in that helps you with the process. Fiber, the right amount of soluble, the right amount of insoluble fiber, which again comes from a diet that has fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, lentils, balance. Fat diets don't give that to you. Apple cider vinegar, extremely important, not only because it works as a prebiotic, but it can help you to stimulate the production of stomach acid, which is why in India, it's a beautiful age old custom to sprinkle lemon over our food because lemon can also stimulate uh, stomach acid secretion in your stomach. So looking at apple cider vinegar 30 minutes before your meal, maybe a tablespoon, a teaspoon, if it's, I don't know, the dosage according to you, what, how it suits you, but apple cider vinegar works beautifully for that. Ginger as well. A little bit of ginger before your meals can also stimulate stomach acid production and of course your prebiotics and your probiotics. So it all comes down to your lifestyle and a balanced diet. But like I said, if you go on constantly treating the symptom the wrong way with an antacid, you can possibly have all of these conditions. And if you have any of these conditions we spoke about and your gut health and your stomach isn't in your recovery plan, you're never gonna get better. That's the sad part of it. I don't mean to induce fear in you, but today the world is stuck in chronic sickness. We're running from one medicine to another. I have no problem with medicine, but when you're taking medicine, are you also changing your lifestyle? When you're taking medicine, are you also looking at managing the side effects of your medication? If you are, you're gonna get better. If you're not, you're gonna be stuck in chronic sickness. So more than over acid, most people actually have low stomach acid levels. So you wanna try to relate yourself to these symptoms. You can also go to your doctor because your doctor can also sometimes help you to determine low stomach acid depending on your symptoms. So this is the importance of lifestyle. This is the importance of knowledge. When you understand, you relate. When you don't, you react in fear. You start making concoctions and having stuff that probably isn't even needed, which is why the whole alkaline lie is a lie. Yes, if we're overly acidic, it's a problem, but when we try to become over alkaline, it's a bigger problem because there are certain parts of your body that have to maintain certain levels of acid, like your stomach. We need to be between three to 3.5 at a pH level. Your skin, the more acidic your skin, you kill microbes and bacteria that come onto your skin, your bladder as well. So everyone's trying to get alkaline, okay, not understanding that the human body has its own pH regulator. Until date, in eight to nine years of our practice, we've never come across a case where someone really, really, really has to get alkaline, one or two cases of extreme, extreme acidosis in the body. Other than that, your lifestyle and your diet will keep your alkaline and your pH levels and your acid levels in balance. It's a regulator that exists in us, works with intelligence. So all of your alkaline waters and all of that stuff is adding zero value. If you bought an alkaline machine right now and you're thinking it's a waste of money, it isn't. Try to keep the pH regulated to max 7.9 or 8, not 9.5, not 11. There's no organism on planet Earth that requires an alkaline pH level of over 8. So if you bought that machine, the best use of that machine is you can possibly wash your face with that water because it's good for your skin. That's about it. So you wanna correlate with everything we spoke about today and make an informed decision. I can't tell you the amount of patients that we see who are suffering because of low stomach acid and antacid abuse. Even if you're in an antacid today, there are natural things that you can do that replicate what an antacid does in your system. Now the choice is whether you wanna do it, whether it's important to you, and if you wanna make that change. Have a great day everyone, until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep, and remember you care is all about you.